Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Harrisburg City Council Legislative Session, Tuesday, January 23rd, 2018. I'm calling this meeting to order 6.05 p.m. Mr. Petrosky, please do the roll call. Mr. Allett? Present. Ms. Daniels? Here. Ms. Green? Present. Mr. Johnson? Here. Mr. Madsen? Here. Mr. Majors? Here. Ms. Williams? Here. Thank you. Moving on to the invocation, Councilwoman Green. Uh, thank you. Uh, first, I would like to take the time to thank everyone for coming. Um, if we could all take the time um, for a moment of silence to commemorate the life of Deputy U.S. Marshal Christopher David Hill, who lost his life while serving a, an arrest warrant in the city of Harrisburg. Thank you. Thank uh, you. A memorial service will be held to celebrate his life this Thursday at 1 p.m. at the Hershey Giant Center. I encourage all who are able to make it to come and show your respects. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Green. Moving on to Pledge of Allegiance, Councilman Maslin. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are certainly having uh, technical difficulties, so tonight we will not be taping this legislative session, but we will be recording, so you will be on record, but we will not be on television for this session. Oh, it's not live. That's what I meant, it's not live on television. Okay, moving on to communication, recognition of Matango's quality candies, Councilman Majors. Uh, thank you, President Williams. I uh, just wanted to take a moment to recognize a uh, long-standing business in the community, the city of Harrisburg. Uh, it's Matango's Candies, located on 15th and Catherine Street. They are entering, uh, they just f concluded their 70th year of business operating in the city of Harrisburg in the Allison Hill neighborhood. Uh, it was started by uh, Christophros Pops Matango. Um, and it's, he's, his uh, legacy has gone on for three generations and is uh, being currently continued by his grandson, Peter. Um, we prepared a, res a proclamation to present to them. Unfortunately, uh, Peter's a little bit busy making treats and taking care of his, uh, his mother uh, to be able to attend this evening. But uh, on behalf of City Council and City of Harrisburg, we just thank the Matango's family for operating in, within the City of Harrisburg for over 70, 70 years and providing treats to uh, the world over, especially their Venetian mints, which are <coughs> delicious. So uh, I would encourage all residents to uh, <laughs> Uh, come on, come on over to, uh, and uh, uh, spend some time and visit with a, a family who's been dedicated to the city of Harrisburg for 70 years uh, and to the Allison Hill community. So uh, myself, well, I will make sure that that, res that proclamation gets presented to the family. But uh, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, Mr. Matt. Thank you, Mr. Majors, and congratulations to Matango's quality candies. Certainly are good candies. Um, I made a mistake. We're still taping, but we're not live at this point. But we will be taping, and it will be on TV. I'm sorry. Misunderstood. We're moving on to communications. Update on Harrisburg Peace Promenade. And please uh, adhere to the five minutes, Mr. Sloan. Yes. We will hear from... Um, after uh, Mr. Sloan? Yes, sir. Or? Yes. We will first hear from Mr. Sloan, then we will hear from Ruby Dobb, Peggy Grove, Jeff Stewart, and Kate Schaffler on behalf of her mother. Mr. Sloan? Yes. Kate, would you join us over here? Uh, good evening, Madam Chairman, August Council Members, Mr. Mayor, and staff. Over 25 years ago, the International Institute for Peace Through Tourism, a project of UNESCO, was founded. Since its 25 years, it has become its own individual organization on all seven uh, continents and in 200 countries. This year, they established a year of global peace parks asking for a national and international movement of local place making. Harrisburg's project uh, was accepted to uh, designate Riverfront Park from Market Street to Division as a global peace park and common ground. 
and we are here tonight first to invite the council to join us on February 22nd from 5 to 7 p.m. for the council and the mayor to join us at the Hilton Hotel when Dr. Louis de Lamour, the uh, dynamic founder of the International Institute for Peace Through Tourism, will come to Harrisburg to formally install Harrisburg's Global Peace Park at the Riverfront Park. In addition to that evening, we are to establish exemplars of peace, and Miss Peggy Grove is here to speak about the exemplars of peace. We have several exemplars, and if you hold on a second, let me get to my, I had, he just sent me, uh, Linwood just sent me an email moments ago, and um, I had to read that to, to be up to date on things. Um, one moment. Sorry about this. Anyway, they, you know what? All right, um, to begin with, um, thank you all for inviting us. I'm not going to list all the people that uh, Linwood did again, but especially thank you for the mayor for being here and council members for receiving us this evening. Um, we have uh, Dr. John Judson, who many of you may know, um, has done hundreds of missions to Haiti, as well as around the world as Physicians for Social Responsibility and Doctors Without Borders. He has been recognized worldwide, and uh, he is our very own, he's a Rotarian for the Harrisburg Rotary, and um, has done so many things, it's impossible to list them all. His wife, Anne Marie Judson, is uh, one of the people who has spearheaded the um, uh, Candles on the Water that is held uh, in the Hiroshima anniversary each year, August 5th, um, and they put um, biodegradable candles on the water and there's a, um, a um, um, ceremony. The two of them will have one um, tree representing the two of their contributions. In addition to their contributions to the community, they, as well as the Lehrmans, Gwyn and David Lehrman, um, and the uh, Physicians for Social Responsibility, especially Anne-Marie Judson, have been responsible for the um, um, Peace Garden that is in the north side of Harrisburg, up near the governor's mansion, where they have the um, Hiroshima um, um, representation, the seven generations, and then there's a peace pole that Anne-Marie was specifically responsible for. Um, in addition to them, um, Janine, Judge Janine Turgeon, who is a judge for Commonwealth Court, and um, not Commonwealth Court, but um, uh, Dauphin County Court, and she does family and children's law. The families that she has helped keep together and the children that she has helped to um, have as good a life as possible um, are renowned in the area. She did work for um, <coughs> Kaylee Roy Irvis, um, as uh, one of his law clerks, and he is also being um, um, uh, one of he is also going to be one of the exemplars. In addition, we have Dr. Love, um, who was a humanitarian, a teacher in this area. Uh, many uh, things have been named for him in the Harrisburg area, and his wife will be accepting in his uh, absence because he passed away um, in the last year and a half. Um, and I'm trying to do this quickly. These people are just so wonderful, every single one of them, that I could say I could go on all night. So I'm uh, please, um, by my giving less time to each one of them, please know that we the information will be available in the uh, Harrisburg Magazine, in the um, the Berg, et cetera. Um, you'll have an opportunity to read more detail about each one of them. Um, and um, Rabbi Ron Miroff from the Hezekamuna community. Um, he is the rabbi, the main rabbi for uh, Hezekamuna. It is the newest um, synagogue rebuilt in the city of Harrisburg. Um, as many of you know, there was a fire um, from the candles from um, uh, Passover, or not from Passover, from Hanukkah. Um, several years ago, and it was rebuilt by Reynolds Company, that is a, a local 
uh, construction company that did a, a respectful and a wonderful job. Uh, if you haven't seen the, the synagogue, it is meant most of the people here in this room have because it is both the mayor's and my uh, precinct. Um, a few years ago, um, the um, uh, precinct that was uh, for the 14th Ward in the city of Harrisburg um, failed to disrepair and did not have adequate heat or bathroom facilities. And I requested of um, Dr. Um, uh, pardon me, of um, Rabbi Miroff, and uh, he w welcomed us with open arms. And uh, the only problem was that the, the food had to be kosher. And so they provide the food for all the, the poll workers there so that uh, there is no um, concern about um, uh, rabbinical. Uh, food laws. Um, who am I missing? Oh, um, the moment from um, from the from 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 um, our Muslim community, and they are um, in the old Lakeside Lutheran Church. Their their uh, mosque is is now located at. Um, um, Green and Division Street in Harrisburg. They offer lots of community. Um, uh, opportunities for especially for women and children um, in the Harrisburg area and it is open to all religions and all faiths and all backgrounds all ethnic um, um, uh, Madam Chairman we are stumbling because we are trying to take a very big, big story and, and attract it minutes. and I'm so sorry <laughs> no, no, we are not sorry we're here we're in fact excited about being here to invite you these ten exemplars will be designated uh, and inducted into the Global Peace Park oh, I mean, by I Mrs. Like A.D. King, who is the sister-in-law of Martin Luther King, and by Dr. Babs Onobongo, who is the director of the King Foundation. We are also working with the city staff, uh, public works, and park and rec to plant 10 peace trees along the riverfront in their honor, and we are working with three dynamic arts organizations, the Susquehanna Art Museum, the Harrisburg Art Association, and Miss Nancy uh, <coughs> Mendez, and the uh, public libraries to create art immersion activities in their honor. We're gonna end- Wait, wait, wait no, the, I have one more. I forgot somebody, and it's important. Yes, Homer Floyd, oh, <laughs> of all people to forget, oh my word, he was first on my list and because I didn't get back to my list, uh, I forgot him. As many of you know, he um, was in charge of Pennsylvania Human Relations and he on his own, the work that he's done through NAACP, uh, teaching tolerance, et cetera, in the city of Harrisburg are well known, um, but I'm embarrassed to have forgotten his we name. We have 15 <laughs> seconds, but we are also gonna I uh, honor an outstanding lady, Mrs. Suzanne Schaefer, gold star mother who has adopted and taken the stewardship of the Potter's Cemetery. Her daughter is here to say a final word on her okay. behalf. Good evening. Good evening. For those of you who don't know what a gold star mother is, a gold star mother is um, someone who has lost their son or daughter in service to um, our fine nation. Uh, they can either die in combat or they can serve, um, or they can die in what the military considers honorable. Um, and my mom, unfortunately, became a Gold Star mother um, four years ago. And on behalf of her, I will read her statement. Good evening. Thank you so much for extending the honor to represent women of sacrifice within our community. As a Gold Star mother, I truly understand freedom is not free and appreciate this committee, mayor and city council for being willing to extend their gratitude, love and care, not only to myself, but to all Gold Star families. However, I think after the events of this past week, I would be remiss in not also acknowledging our law enforcement, fire and first responder and dispatch community for their service and sacrifices as well. I look forward to meeting all of you in February and hopefully able to dialogue more about this project and to personally be able to thank you all for this great honor. God bless you all for your amazing work and I look forward to meeting you all real soon. In gold star love always, Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, much, thank you, thank thank you Mr. Mr. Snow.
Next under communications, we have presentation for support of Resolution 4 of 2018. Ms. Jane Buckwalk. Good evening, uh, City Council. Good evening. Mayor, um, and thank you so much for having us here tonight uh, and for considering our resolution. And what the resolution says is we, the City of Harrisburg, believe in fair redistricting. And it has, you don't have to be uh, really uh, reading the newspapers front to back to know that recently the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania has said that the current maps, voter registration maps or districting maps are um, unconstitutional to the Pennsylvania Constitution and they have uh, directed the assembly to uh, redraw those maps uh, I think by February 9th and have them back to the 15th for approval uh, and it's, it's huge. It means that we are well on our way where the voters choose their legislators and not the other way around. Okay. Harrisburg has been one of the most disenfranchised through gerrymandering, and if you look at the map, they cut out the city of Harrisburg at the last uh, redistricting after the 2010, and the process of that was also mind-boggling. You know, they waited to the last minute, brought it out to the floor, got voted on, and was signed by Governor Corbett, but anyhow. Tonight, we are requesting that Harrisburg City adopt a resolution in support of fair districting, in support of fair, and I want to add this, transparent districting. Um, it's been a battle. We're still fighting because even though the Supreme Court has said, change the map, what fair districts PA that I represent uh, is asking for is a process change, an amendment to the Constitution. There are two bills pending right now, Senate Bill 722, House Bill 22. They are held up in committee and not being released out to the public, out to the floor, uh, public for comments or to the floor for vote. Um, they're a little stubborn on it. We keep working on them, but they have to get out. If we miss our end of legislation deadline, process starts all over again, as with any constitutional amendment. I would like to introduce uh, one hard working crew here. This is Jean Handley, who is the Dolphin County Coordinator for Fair Districts PA, and Art Florio, who tirelessly is getting these resolutions. When Harrisburg, and I'm saying when, not if, when Harrisburg adopts this resolution, approximately 73% of the residents in Dolphin County will be covered by a resolution supporting uh, fair districting in PA. It's a very hard thing to argue with, but be it may, there's stall techniques going on right now. So we'll keep fighting. Thank you very much for considering it, and thank you very much for your time. I, I can answer any questions. Nothing I like better to do than talk about fair districts, but. Mm -hmm. I think it's, most people are pretty uh, familiar with gerrymandering and the dastardly effects of it. So thank you very much. You're welcome, Jamie. Thank you. And we will certainly will consider that. Thank you. Moving on to courtesy of the floor, anyone who would like to come to the mic, please do so now. I'll start with to my right. Good evening, City Council and Mayor. Um, I've been out of whack for this winter due to health issues, but I had thought about starting off 2018 the right way. Can you and so, please you identify know, yourself, sir? Excuse me. I beg your, your name and your address, Oh, Ron please. Johnson, 1847 Zarka Street. I'm the chair of the Neighborhood Square Watch Group. Thank you. And um, the, the city's community back in the mid to late 90s, early 2000s, uh, were organized, had to organize because of illegal activities which were destroying our communities. So we partnered up with the city to, com to combat these issues. 2008 to 2012, the city came in and shut down whole city blocks to help us eliminate these Ill illegal activities that was overrunning our communities and we began to feel safe again. 2014 to present, our communities started to spiral backwards because of most properties in our area started 
starting to become investment properties and folks began to move back into our communities with the same unsafe behaviors that operated in their previous communities. Now we appreciate everybody helping these small businesses to get started, but right now what we're viewing is illegal pharmaceutical companies being in our communities under the guise of corner stores who are reaping, raping and pillaging our communities instead of enhancing them. We deserve so much better and our communities are no longer feeling safe again. And I will be getting in contact with the new public chair, so we will become best friends. All right. Okay, thank you, Mr. It. Johnson. <laughs> thank you. Anyone else to my right, please? Oh, good evening. Thank you, Richard Soto, 1339 South 18th Street of the South Side of Harrisburg. I have a couple questions. One is this, uh, Cornell, we talked a couple months ago. I'm very disturbed. I have got this mail, a citation from the city of Spectre. I'm thinking it's a tap, and that's how I'm really looking at it. Because when I speak out on some issues, on some things, and you're now part of a certain team, <laughs> certain things just start coming up and popping up, and harassment is going across the board. And I experienced this type of thing going down the line. But what I have to say, my property, my home, 1339 South 18th Street, I have a vehicle park. I know city have an order, we spoke. There's no busted windows, no flat tires. I also use a councilman suggestion, put it, a cover over it, because my car is broke. So, you know, I do have more than one vehicle. It's not bought anyone, it's not on the streets, it's on my property, my driveway that I pay for my house for. I don't owe a mortgage. I pay my taxes. I don't owe back taxes at all. We can check it. I can show your receipt and everything. But when you, my problem is when the city inspector walk on my property without my permission, that is trespassing, number one. Number two, I called the uh, pen doc and I asked them, can my vehicle be on my property if it's not registered? And they said, yes, as long as it's not on the street. Okay. Then they scratched a couple numbers out, $1,000, $500, and the last one was $615. Got this today. But we have abandoned houses in the city of Harrisburg, especially in the south side of Harrisburg. It's not boarded up. And the city inspector want to walk on my property by my vehicle, on my property, and kids is getting pulled into these young ladies, getting raped. And I can prove it. Crack houses, using as a drug, illegal activity, but you want to come on my property about my vehicle that I'm trying to fix up? I'm not rich, I don't have a lot of money, I can't fix my car up right away. But if you want to give me a donation to fix my car up to get it up and running, you can do that, it's no problem. But I have an issue with that, the, the, uh, the, the uh, city inspector. Name is Bruce. So I want to know how can we get this issue fixed? Because it's on my property. And the city ordinance says that I asked Mr. Councilman is about abandoned car. My car is not abandoned. It's not busted windows. There's no flat tires or anything else. The vehicle is just not working. And it's on my property. It's not bothering anyone. You know, but we, we, we have a street that is, the lights don't even work. We have poles. And I've took all the numbers down to the polls and sent it down here, but we still ain't get our lights fixed on our street. But we also got a park down there that be having shootings and all the other crazy stuff with no lights there at all neither. But they want to come and harass me about a car that is broke on my property. <coughs> I have an issue with that, okay, you know? And I've been trying to get some help with this. And the man just acting in rude and ignorant. But how can I press charges on him for trespassing? Because if I trespass on somebody's property, they're going to send me a citation because I never gave this man permission. You had to literally come all on my property just to be nosy to do what you did. And then you, and you're welcome to my house. I mean, you'll ride down there, Mayor, and whoever else, you'll see the car there. And, and I know you see what I'm talking about because you know my driveway, you know my house. Okay, I Mr. Mean, Soda, we heard, we've heard from you. Uh, so now we're going to, if you're wait to the end of the meeting, you want to speak with Ms. Green, and we will 
Uh, I definitely appreciate that. it. Can I one more thing and I'm yes. done? Okay. Well, see, we've heard from you. We need to investigate the final. Okay, no problem. Okay, now I'll, I'll give you this. You can have this, please. Okay. Uh, the other issue is, you know, a lot of money went through through our city, Midtown, South uh, Allison Hill, Uptown. But when are we really going to get to the South Side of Harrisburg on Paxson Street, those businesses that have been there for years that want some type of help and, and some boost to energize our and property value could go up in the South Side of Harrisburg. We have land out there too. Why we can't build no apartment buildings and stuff down there? Because we have a housing projects down there. I mean, we have crime all over the city. It's all over the city. I have an issue about the gun thing and stuff. We don't have gun shops in the city of Harrisburg, but we have a gun show at the farm show. And I know a lot of that is out of y'all control, but it's something to really look at. Okay. You know, please. And looking for the jobs in the city of Harrisburg. I'm definitely looking for that. I know during the campaign you say we're going to look out. The city will be uh, employing people from the city of Harrisburg. But I don't see that. I'm being honest. I see people that don't live in the city of Harrisburg working in the city of Harrisburg. That's all I have to say. Thank you for, for your You're help. welcome, Mr. Soto. And please stay, please stay and, and speak with Councilwoman um, Green after the meeting, please. Thank you. Thank Anyone else to my right, please? Anyone in the middle? Anyone to my left? Thank you. Moving on to approval of minutes. Approval of the legislative session minutes of January 9, 2018. Council members, any omissions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, minutes will stand as approved. Report to committee. Report from Chair Matson on the work session of January 16, 2018. Yes. Mr. Matson, are you ready with your report? I am. Thank you, sir. Uh, we discussed Resolution 1, 2, 2018, and Resolution 2, 2018. I think both resolutions would bring some much needed development to the downtown area. I do, we discussed a number of things, but the highlights to me are when we're doing these projects, I really want to make sure that residents get an opportunity for any jobs opportunities that may come with these projects. And then um, when we're bringing in development to the city, we do have a high demand for affordable housing. So I think moving forward when having these discussions, we'll want to see if with these projects, we could have one or two units that are a little bit more affordable for our lower income folks. So, but with that, I'd recommend that we uh, vote on the resolutions and that I would recommend my colleagues support it. Thank, thank you, you. Ms. thank you, Chair Manson. Moving on to Chair Allett on the report of work session of January 16, 2018. Are you ready with your report? Yes, ma'am. So update on uh, work session covering uh, community business and budget and finance. We had up for discussion resolution five of 2018. It is a resolution authorizing the city of Harrisburg to negotiate and enter into software subscription agreement with Superion to upgrade existing accounting software utilized for essential financial operations for the city. Uh, you will get no argument from me to offer my support for this legislation because our accounting software is badly in need of this migration and the update associated with it. Uh, this will be a very necessary thing going forward and it's probably the beginning of a, a longer phase of updates and migrations that our accounting system needs to go through, but this is certainly a step in the right direction. Um, so I would recommend this passage by my colleagues. Thank you, Chair Alec. Moving on to ordinance or first reading. We have none this evening. Ordinance for amendment, we have none as well. Ordinance for final passage, we have none. We move on to resolutions, resolution one, 2018. Mr. Petrosky, please read that into record. Resolution one of 2018 uh, was moved by Mr. Madsen, second by Mr. Allen. It's a resolution approving the preliminary final subdivision and land development plan submitted by Brad Jones, president of South Second Associates LLC to convert the properties at 17 South Second Street and 21 South Second Street into a mixed use project. Any questions or comments, council members? Oh, I, I got it. Yeah. All right, no, me. go ahead, Mr. Um, one, th one thing I want to point out, I know, um, Councilman Madsen kind of pointed out inside his um, report in regards to the different projects that are taking place by Harristown. Um, as everyone knows, I've been, you know, staying on my soapbox about MB participation and um, just do some research. Um, it was at one point in time the city had, um, back in 12, 20, 12, 23 of 2003, um, passed the ordinance, um, which is in Chapter 2 not 903, which was called the Affirmative Action Cooperation Plan. And during that time, um, kind of give everyone an idea of what that is. Um, during that time, basically they got 
um, cooperative parties to come together. And these parties were um, the Harrisburg, Redeve Harrisburg Redevelopment Authority, Harristown Development Corporation, um, the Harrisburg Authority, which we all know is CRW, um, Harrisburg Downtown Improvement District Authority, which is known as the DID, mm -hmm. Harrisburg Housing Authority, Harrisburg Leasing Authority, which I don't think is around anymore, mm -hmm. um, Harrisburg Parking Authority, um, to basically come into a cooperation plan of setting goals for uh, minority businesses and disadvantaged um, business opportunities. Um, so um, I know I've been talking about, um, about some type of plan um, that the city should have and more of a legislation piece to it. And that piece is currently in place. Um, but you know, just reading through the ordinance, there's a lot of things that need to be updated with, updated with this ordinance, but I think it gives us a foundation to kind of move forward. And I think it's an opportunity to kind of point this out um, because I think Harristown um, hopefully will continue to be a, a partner with this because as we know, there are the central centralized unit that's doing most of the development downtown. So I want to just point out to my council members that, you know, the mechanism, you know, for um, creating more uh, minority businesses and disadvantaged business opportunities within these contracts does exist and this is an ordinance. So I think it's something that we can open up and um, look to tap into our different partners and revise in this ordinance where um, as these different plans are taking place um, that we have more of a policy and ordinance direction rather than just um, just speaking, hoping, wishing that these things are going to happen, but actually putting action towards it. So I just wanted to point that out just for the record. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I just want to, I have a statement that I like to make. Not, it's not a comment, but a statement. And this is no reference to anyone personally. This is to all the developers that come into the city. And the statement is, when I committed myself to being a public servant, it was with the commitment to being fair, honest, transparent, and a voice to advocate for all residents. As a lifelong resident of the city of Harrisburg, there have been many positive changes for all of the people who reside in the city. And other changes have been self-beneficial to some of us. Lately, there has been continuous legislation over the past two years that has come before this council regarding development in the downtown area. This, to, this appears to be a form of gentrification to me, which is a process of renovating, deteriorating urban neighborhoods and downtowns by means of bringing more affluent residents into the areas and changing the district's character and certainly its culture. My opinion may offend some people. Certainly this is not my intent and I apologize if you're offended, but I'm going to be very vocal about this and very passionate. I'm very much in favor of developers investing in Harrisburg, but unless we change the practices of how we develop our city and have accessible and affordable housing for everyone. And I'm talking about your cashiers, I'm talking about your clerks, I'm talking about your janitors who work in the downtown bars and restaurants and might want to live in the housing areas. But until we do that within any neighborhood of this city, we have not done our job for our residents. I'm willing to work with the administration developers to make this happen, but I will also be watchful in the pursuit to assure that all persons are treated equal regarding their housing options, where they want to live and how they want to live. Most of the downtown areas are old buildings that are being renovated for high upscale. I want them renovated for those who work at lower paying jobs. And I also know that there are ordinance and tools to help guide attainable and appropriate housing in every neighborhood, and I certainly will be the watchdog. Is there any other questions or comments? I, think I have another question. Okay. I, was, I, guess, I, guess the, I guess the only challenge would be, um, I don't know what ordinance we have in place to kind of, you know, um, to, you know, whether, you know, certain communities have certain um, set-asides for affordable housing, so I'm not yes. sure if we have that within our ordinance. So maybe, you know, if that's a, 
you know, we have to be more than just watchdogs. I mean, we've been watching for a long time, but I think there's a way to kind of develop um, real ordinance and real changes to actually actually create what we want to see. Because if there's no there's no guidelines, there's no mm -hmm. type of whether you know people have done it through different incentives, people have done it through mandatory requirements. Um, if there's no there's nothing that's out there that exists, everything's going to continue to be the same. And we so I think those so I think a lot of that burden has to be you know driven by us through conversations with the administration, through different developers to make sure. We're doing it in a way that's productive, but also allows for affordable housing opportunity for everyone in each district of the city. But I don't think there's nothing in place as far as our ordinance that kind of protects for that, for us to kind of be a watchdog for what's there. Well, we're going to be a watchdog and also going to look at all the ordinances. That's one of the goals that I have uh, set for us is to go through all the ordinances and update those ordinances, as I indicated in the work session last week. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, please call the vote. Calling the vote for uh, Resolution 1 of 2018. Mr. Allett? Yes. Ms. Daniels? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Madsen? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Resolution 1 passes. Resolution 2, 2018, Mr. Petrosky? Resolution 2 of 2018 was moved by Mr. Madsen, seconded by Mr. Allett. a resolution approving the preliminary final subdivision and land development plan submitted by Brad Jones, president of Harristown Enterprises, to Convert an existing office building into a 12 unit mixed use building. Any questions or comments on resolution two, council members? Hearing none, please call the vote. Mr. Allett? Yes. Ms. Daniels? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Madsen? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Resolution two passes. Thank you. Moving on to resolution four, 2018. <clears throat> resolution four of 2018 was moved by Mr. Johnson, seconded by Mr. Allett. It's a resolution in support of a constitutional mandate to create and empower a nonpartisan citizens commission for a legislative redistricting and, and congressional reportionment. Any questions or comments? Uh, just comments. Yes, Mr. Be Mr. Allen. Uh, the fair districts program mm -hmm. in this resolution I think is really important for us to, to consider and to promote in terms of the, <coughs> the importance of kind of one voice, one vote in our, in our country. Um, and what's happened as a result of extreme gerrymandering over time is given um, favor to one party or another. And, and quite honestly, depending on what state you live in, it may affect one of the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, one or the other. And I think what's really important to note is that this is a nonpartisan issue in my mind, because if you truly hold up the belief of one voice, one vote, um, you want that vote to count, and you want everyone to have that opportunity to be able to make their voice heard. And if there's anything that I feel has really led to voter disenfranchisement and, um, and, and voters feeling very concerned about whether or not their vote matters, it is this issue. And I think that um, for us in our community, uh, as Jane pointed out, uh, you know, we have three congressional districts in Dauphin County. And guess what? We're not even the worst in the state. Montgomery County has five congressional districts mm -hmm. that serve it. Um, these are really serious issues that we need to look at and make sure that we are given access to people to have that opportunity. Um, so I really wanted to put that out there. I think this is a very important concept. It is a nonpartisan issue. I think as Americans, if we believe in the right to vote, we need to um, support this type of effort going forward. Thank you, Mr. Abbott. Anyone else? Please call the vote, Mr. Petrosky. Mr. Allett? Yes. Ms. Daniels? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Madsen? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Resolution 4 passes. Hey. Moving on to Resolution 5, 2018. Resolution 5 of 2018 was moved by Ms. Williams, seconded by Mr. Madsen. It's a resolution authorizing the City of Harrisburg to negotiate and enter into a software subscription agreement with Spirion LLC to upgrade existing accounting software utilized for essential financial operations of the city. Any questions or comments, council members? Please call the vote. Mr. Allett? Yes. Ms. Daniels? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Madsen? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Resolution 5 passes. Thank you. Moving on to Resolution 8. Uh, resolution 8 of 2018. Uh, just uh, for the record, this was formerly, um, a, there was formerly a resolution that was withdrawn by the administration. So this is the new Resolution 8 of 2018 to be put on the record. Okay. Um, resolution this resolution 8 of 2018 is a, a resolution approving the preliminary final subdivision and land development plan 
Submitted by Brad Jones, president of Harristown Enterprises to convert existing vacant office space into 13 apartment units. That'll be placed in Community and Economic Development Committee. Moving on to Resolution 9, 2018. Resolution 9 of 2018 was uh, moved by Mr. Allett, seconded by Ms. Williams. It's a resolution approving a professional services agreement with Trout, Eversol, and Groff LLP CPAs and business advisors to conduct and reconciliation of the uh, compensated absences, liability, and neighborhood fund receivable accounts. We placed in Budget and Finance Committee. Moving on to Resolution 10. Resolution 10 of 2018 was moved by Mr. Allen, seconded by Ms. Williams. It's a resolution approving a professional services agreement with Mayor Dussel, certified public accountants, to audit the city's annual audit and financial report for the year ended December 31st, 2017. That also will be placed in Budget and Finance Committee. Moving on to Resolution 11. Resolution 11 of 2018 was moved by Ms. Williams, seconded by Mr. Allen. It's a resolution appointing Ms. Shannon Gordy to serve on the Zoning Hearing Board for the City of Harrisburg. That would be placed in Administration Committee. Moving on to Resolution 12 of 2018. Resolution 12 of 2018 was moved by Ms. Williams, seconded by Mr. Allen. It's a resolution appointing Judd Pittman to serve on the Lerda Appeals Board. That also will be placed in Administration Committee. Moving on to Resolution 13. Resolution 13 of 2018 was moved by Mr. Allett, second by Ms. Williams. It's a resolution approving the first proposed 2018 budget reallocations in order to reclassify recla certain allocations and authorize the roll forward of certain 2017 budget year commitments. That would be placed in Budget and Finance Committee. Moving on to Resolution 14. Resolution 14 of 2018 was moved by Mr. Madsen, second by Ms. Green. It's a resolution approving the preliminary final subdivision and land development plan submitted by Scott Dunwoody on behalf of Bethesda Mission to renovate and expand the existing Bethesda Mission Community Center located at 1438 Hearst Street. That will be placed in Community and Economic Development Committee. Moving on to old business community members, I mean, community, uh, council members. Uh, old business council members, are there any old business at this time? Okay. Moving on to new business council members, are there any new business at this time? Okay. I have a move motion for adjournment. So moved. I have a second. Second. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned.